Heidi ho I'm Uno Clay from Philadelphia, and I support Gen X Grown Up on Patreon. In a world torn apart by angry pundits and ceaselessly acerbic news, the cheerful tone of Gen X Grown Up is always a welcome escape, not to mention endlessly entertaining, and sometimes even informative. If you want to support the show too, click on genxgrownup.com slash Patreon and toss them a couple bucks. It's the guaranteed way to gain the respect of your peers and immediate promotions at work. Not guaranteed in all 50 states. Some employers may see fit to demote you, and your peers will probably find you weird and distasteful. Results may vary. You are warned. No life, no fun. Don't you know that you're a grown-up? Gen X Grown Up is a YouTube channel, website, and audio podcast you're listening to right now. All made for and by people who love exploring media, games, tech, and toys of yesterday and today through the eyes of Gen Xers who refuse to grow up. Your dinner cannot just be french fries. Basically, life sucks as a grown up. Welcome back, Gen X Grown Up podcast listeners, to episode 91 of the Gen X Grown Up podcast. I am John. Joining me, as always, is George. Hey, how's it going, guys? And Mo is here. Hey, everybody. In this episode, we'll check out a new series about an alien posing as a small town doctor, review the hot new flagship smartphone from Samsung, and play a new game where you can turn into a werewolf. I'm already interested in that game because I love werewolves. <laughs> Almost as much as he loves puppets. Not, no, nothing compares. Nothing compares. Number one is puppets. Werewolves are in the top. 10 though. Yeah, okay. His first love. <laughs> That's why I said almost. It was qualified. You're right. You know me so well. <laughs> Before we get into those cool things and I find out more about that werewolf, we have some fourth listener email. Fourth listener this episode is Dan. And the subject line of his email is Billboard Hits of 1981. Uh-oh. There you go. I'm worried. Go ahead. Our musical backtracks are always popular. And so this one's no different. And Dan writes in and says, wait, what? Rod Stewart didn't sing Betty Davis Eyes? <laughs> 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 I'd never heard it before until I was reading that somebody said that it was a Kim Carnes, right? Sounds yes. like Rod Stewart in that. And I don't necessarily hear it. George, you said you didn't either. But I understand why you might think that in, in the 80s. Okay. Uh, he goes on to say, I am as blown away learning this as I was when I found out the Washington Redskins were not from Washington State. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> when did you find that out? 1942? Jesus Christ, they've been around forever. <laughs> if you don't do your research, well, I didn't know because I don't follow sports, so I'm, I'm still well, not and sure. now they're no longer called the Washington Redskins. That's right. Yeah, They're that's just right. a team from Washington now. <laughs> that's it. And so they come up with a name at some point. Yep. Dan goes on to say, now, if you will please excuse me while I crawl back under my rock, keep up the great work. <laughs> And the amazing trips back to memory lane, Gen X style. Dan. Oh, that's thanks, cool. Dan. That's cool. Thanks. Great, Dan. We love it every time the fourth listener writes in. If you would like your email featured here on the show, just hit us up at podcast at genxroadup.com. We read every single one and most make the show. All right. With that good business behind us, it's time to jump into the body of the show right after this quick break. You know how I save money with unsweetened Kool-Aid and sugar, just like my mom did. I remember how she'd mix a big pitcher full. Kool-Aid was so good and so inexpensive. It's still as delicious as ever. Today, with my sugar, it's about 12 cents a quart. Has vitamin C, too. I like giving Kathy what my mom gave me. Kool-Aid brand soft drink mix and your sugar. You loved it as a kid, you trust it as a mother. Hit Pass Moto, sponsored by Moto America, is the show that keeps you up to speed on the latest in motorcycling and brings the biggest names in motorcycle racing right to you. From candid interviews with the top names in racing to providing insights into the trends and trendsetters driving the motorcycle industry, we have you covered. New episodes are available every Thursday at pitpassmoto.com and on your favorite podcast app. Right on. Let's kick things off talking about new media that we have been checking out. Could be movies or comics or TV shows or whatever it is. And I want to start with a movie that I saw in the theater, Woo! if you can believe it. Wow. I uh, rang Mo up because I know that uh, Mo is jonesing to see some King Kong versus Godzilla, which is not I yet am, out I yet. Am. But Monster Hunter, this film based on a video game with Mila Jovovich in it, was in the theaters. Is that her whole career now is just making just movies playing video game based movies. off of video games? Pretty I'm much. pretty sure. Yeah. yeah. Except for the one journal arc kind of diversion right. she did. But Somebody that didn't made work a video so well. game for it. I know there was <laughs> sure. a Fifth Element video game. There's got to be a Fifth Element video game. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that might be. That's basically her entire niche. That's what she does. But yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> so Monster Hunter is what you think. It's Mila Jovovich fighting giant monsters. Uh, I'll get to that in a second. Let's talk about going to the theater. This is a cool experience that I had. So you get to go to a place where other people are. You buy nachos. You sit in a nice, comfortable recliner. It's been so long since I got to do this. It was great. Yeah. It's weird, but it was great to go back and do it again. I mean, wearing a face mask and all that, but that's fine. Yeah, it w- it's acceptable. I think the last time I got to go to the theater was when we saw Tenet, maybe. Yeah. And I have not been back since then. Well, when's, I mean, I think my AMZ membership has lapsed. What about yeah. you, George? Yeah, and remember if we, if you remember, we talked about it. I canceled mine because they gave that weird, oh, you totally canceled crappy it. thing oh, about right. you can't just put it on hold. You have to cancel mm-hmm. it. If you cancel it, you can't be back for six yeah. months. Yeah. But fine. But anyway, that's the theater experience itself, which I really have missed. And I love going back to that. But so. I only bring up Monster Hunter to talk about the theater, really, because Monster Hunter was, I think it was only good enough to get me in the theater to see a movie. It was, it was. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Like so many movies based on video games, it was unbelievable. It was predictable. It would, the actors in it were kind of being cheesy. There was some fun monster battles. I'll give you that, but I could have just seen those and not seen the movie. Yeah. It was both like better than I expected, but still a bad movie. <laughs> Which, if right. that makes sense. We really expected not much. Much then yeah, I really had very low you expectations. You expected a one and got a two. Not even. <laughs> I say I'm one and a half. <laughs> I think George is, is just about on it. I expected, yeah, like a, a really, really bad, and it was maybe a notch above that. I'm like, you know what? It actually exceeded my expectations. Luckily, the expectations were so low that that was easy, but... You know, I'm not going to waste a lot of time talking about it. I mainly, again, want to talk about the theater. If you get a chance to watch Monster Hunter on streaming, mute it and just watch it while you're doing something else and watch the giant monsters, which are impressive effects. Yeah, but, oh yeah, the special, the fights and stuff are awesome. Yeah, that that's all there is in it, though. Giant monsters. Yeah, it didn't make much sense, to be quite honest. <laughs> yeah, like the fights and stuff is like, oh, okay, why, what? It's huh? like every giant monster, we finally killed him. <gasps> Or did you? And he comes back to life unpredictably. Yeah, it's it's, it's that kind of predictable. It's a video game movie. Yawn. But I had a great time with the theater, eating nachos and jalapenos. So all that made it worth it. Yeah, that was fun. Mo, how about you? What have you been checking out? So one of my favorite shows just ended its fifth season, which is The Expanse. Mm. Oh, okay. Is that the end or is there more? Is it the one more season? I know they guaranteed one more season. All right. Which they better freaking have another season. Otherwise, I will kill somebody Mm. because where they left it. Uh, But to show the quality Ollie has not diminished at all. I don't know if you guys follow the show at all, but they had some pretty wild stuff happen of previous seasons. So I was trying to figure out like where the hell they're going to go with this. And let me tell you, they picked a direction and they went in it and it was great. I mean, it kept the whole story going and it was just interesting. And the ending of this last episode, I was just like, it's what I want from this. I want to look forward to the next season, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, you don't want a season to end. You'd be like, okay, that was great. And then you just kind of forget about it. And this one, I'm like, oh, where's the next season? That's just, to me, is a sign of a good show. Yeah, that's how we stop watching shows. The season ends and you're not into it anymore. Right, then a new season starts up and you're kind of like, oh, a new season started. Mm-hmm. Early in the life of this podcast, I remember both of you encouraging me to watch Expanse. And I tried it a couple of times and I just haven't gotten into it. You continue to. Did you st- keep up with it? George, you still or no? Uh, no, I've kind of dropped off in the middle of season two, like toward the last couple of episodes of season two. Mm-hmm. I haven't picked it back up, although I, I intend to. It's just that a lot of other things got in the way as that happens. And then once you're behind one season, then all of a sudden it's yeah. two seasons and now it's three seasons right. I'm behind. So it's hard to jump back in. Now you feel it's overwhelming. Yeah. Like it's just so much work to catch up. I know that feeling, but the thing I liked about the expanse and I don't know if Mo feels the same way since he's watched more of it. He's a more of an authority on it, but I always felt like it was, much more of a political intrigue drama story than it was a sci-fi story. Yeah. It feels a little bit like another show in that same genre, the Babylon reimagining 5? of Battlestar Galactica. Oh, Battlestar Galactica. Okay. Yeah, uh, Babylon 5 as well. They're all kind of like sci-fi is the platform for me, but it's more about the inner workings of a governmental body or political groups or factions mm. fighting against each other. Yeah, it is. Uh, there's some yep. science fiction elements to the story for sure. Like in season one of this show, there was, you know, the whole aliens spores kind of stuff that were turning people weird colors of blue and making them turn into zombies from the latest Mila Jovovich video game, apparently. (laughs) (laughs) Right. (laughs) But I I do enjoy the series. I definitely want to get back to it. I've heard that there were some major cast changes for this last season because somebody got in trouble or something and had to be fired. Somebody does die and gets replaced. Okay. Uh, Okay. I won't spoil that that any more than that and when it happened i was like (gasps) but again it was like yeah you're right george it is it's kind of like science fiction is just 
the world. It is all about colonialism and classism. I mean, there's, there's all the elements in it, but to me, what mm-hmm. I really like, it is a character based series. Sure. Yeah. That's good. And you really, and then so when you see the characters and they behave, like one of the characters, I'm, I could go too much into it, but he grew up like a really rough childhood. Blah, 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 so he doesn't have a good moral compass personally. Okay. And so he's now off by himself and he realizes that he's doing things that are not really good. And the series, he's like, I need to get back to the crew because he realized that without them, he doesn't have any direction about what's so, right. So he's wrong. realizing that his companions are his moral compass exactly. because he didn't have. Oh, I see. Yeah, that character based stuff is great. Yeah, and that's why I really love about the show. So I'm super, super happy. Yeah, I hear good things about it. I feel like I should get into it, but I'm sure we'll get fourth listener emails saying what's wrong with you. Watch the Expanse like Mo. <laughs> we'll read those when they come in. But all right, Expanse season five, and hopefully yeah. one more season coming. One more at least. So Supposedly. that's what okay. I got going on. So how about you, George? What have you been watching? I've been watching the thing that we all should be watching if we're not, and I'm pretty sure we all are, and that is the new Alan Tudyk show, Resonant oh, yeah. Alien on Absolutely. Sci-Fi. Oh, yeah. You talked about it last show, yes. and it is so good. <sighs> oh, I mean, to my me, goodness. Well, yeah. Okay, good. Except, <laughs> is it going to have that curse? That's the only thing I'm worried about. But keep going. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I was going to get into that. For me, the way that I know this show is really good is my wife has in, decided that she likes the show now and wants to watch it together. We don't oh, nice. often share a lot of TV shows together because a she grew up in a different country the english is a second language barrier she doesn't mm-hmm, have all right. the same references and You're john right. i think i mentioned to you when we were talking about this before the recording that this show it has a bunch of those colloquial references to our society or things that have happened in our society of course but they yeah. show them in the show so you don't have to have previous knowledge of them before ah, you start okay, watching the episode okay. oh. and that's very important for someone like her because she didn't grow up on things like Law and Order, which is a great running gag in the first episode. And, <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> right. You know, yeah. the way that he plays off of that whole thing, learning how to speak from that show, and he loves it, and good mystery, you know, and mm-hmm. I already know who killed the man. He killed himself, and, you know, all, <laughs> it's just so much fun. I can already see that there are going to yep, be some yep, solid yep. character development just from episode number one. Uh, I haven't even watched episode two yet because we're scheduling really? time to watch it together. Oh, boy. But I, I think I said in our Discord server, after watching like 13 minutes of it, I knew two things without a doubt. Number one, it's going to be one of my favorite shows. And number two, it's only going to last one goddamn season. Yeah. I hope you're wrong. I do too. It's on oh. sci fi. It's yeah. very highbrow humor. And it's Alan Tudyk, who, as Mo mentioned, <laughs> doesn't exactly have the best track record with multiple season TV shows. No, he doesn't. But he's on good shows. He's on. He's not only on good shows, he creates good shows. I mean, we talked about Con Man. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's only two seasons. He's, he's one of a kind. And his his acting ability, I don't think they could have cast a more mm-hmm. perfect actor of this day and age for that role. Yeah. He's brilliant in it. His physicality in the role of being an alien who's conformed their form down to a human body and then trying <laughs> to adjust and not knowing what to do with his hands a la Talladega Nights, you know, kind of a thing. Yeah. And, <laughs> and then getting drunk and dancing and it's just so much fun. The other characters in the show, you can tell there's going to be some great supporting acts. I cannot yeah, wait yeah. to see more of Big mm. Black and his <laughs> lieutenant deputy sheriff lady. That's not going to happen. <laughs> He's awesome. <laughs> the snowflake Mr. Mayor. I mean, yeah. they're great. I have things I'm dying to say about this show. I love it. Just, you mentioned it last episode. I had never heard of it. I'm like, oh, it sounds interesting. I am all caught up. I'm going to spoil nothing. But I was having lunch the other day with Marcus, one of our patrons, and he had not heard of the show at all. And I'm like, let me tell you about this and this and this. And I couldn't shut up about all the things I loved about it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I will say the things that are bad about, not bad, but it's pretty predictable. I can yeah, kind of tell you is. what's going to happen in the season. I, I have a pretty good idea. I can tell you what's going to happen throughout the entire show before it's canceled. Yeah. It, you're right. It's predictable, <laughs> yeah. but it's damn good. Yeah. But it's good. It's so yeah. good. It is. It's fun. It's like we talked about Mr. Mayor last time where when you have good actors, and good characters just throw them in a blender and watch how they interact yeah and whoever wrote this put together such a great like an amalgam like you said the sheriff who's weird and like this deputy sheriff she's so kind of dopey and the mayor who's a snowflake all those things are great and there's a ticking clock going on because the snow is melting and he's trying to finish his mission Uh, yeah there's more i want to say but i 
can't spoil it. All those things would spoil things. But man, first, thank you, George, for telling me it exists. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you, Alan Tudyk, for bringing this character to life. It's so much fun. The one thing, like you said, it's a totally predictable show, right? We we, we all know where it's going to go and probably, Don't even probably, care. probably what's going to happen. <laughs> yep. But the thing that gets me is like the one that I think what makes the show really brilliant. He's an alien and his insight into how people act is kind of like was super interesting to me. Mm-hmm. Like this is yep. one small scene where he's looking at it, he's like, oh, well, she's displaying grief as anger. Right. He's yeah. insecure yeah. as this. And I was like, that is such a cool insight into these characters. Because mm-hmm. he's analyzing the human condition right. and realizing how people are acting and so he can figure it out. Yeah. Those things are awesome. I think for me, my favorite two parts of episode one, number one, they stole one of my classic colloquialism lines. He's sitting there and he's talking to himself about the kid being able to see his alien form and the last thing is you know there's three options and there's this there's this and then that's some bullshit and i was like that's my goddamn line stole that right from he's me. used that several times in the yeah. other episodes that's his thing yep he stole it from you george the whole audio thing where he's he's so in love with law and order and my wife loved yep. this part because he's at the funeral and he knows something he was poisoned Gung gung. <laughs> gung gung. Yeah. He makes the sound effect himself. <laughs> exactly. That's what I mean. He makes that sound effect and he's, oh, it's just so brilliant. You can see the humor, the kid inside the alien. At the same time, the alien mm-hmm. also tries to kill a kid in the same episode. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant stuff. Yeah. Yep. My baloney has a first name. It's O S C A R. My baloney has a second name. It's M A Y E R. Oh, I love to eat it every day. And if you ask me why, I'll say, cause Oscar Mayer has a way with B O L O G N A. Oscar Mayer, the first name in Bologna. How's that? Coming up on 5 Minute News, I'm Anthony Davis. You might think it's partisan because maybe it's critical of one side or the other, but it's not. It's just the truth. And I think that's also something that's kind of unusual for Americans listening to the radio or to podcasts because the news landscape in the States has been so partisan for so many decades. So 5-Minute News is verified, truthful, independent, unbiased and essential world news daily. For tech and toys, I have got something for my birthday that I really want to start us off with. Okay. And it, uh, this is just amazing. It's a book. It's called Art and Arcana, A Visual History of Dungeons and Dragons. Oh, oh okay. Coffee table okay. book? Coffee table book. Okay. It's four freaking hundred pages. Whoa. Okay. Well, there's a lot there for Dungeons and Dragons. That's a lot of source it's, material. It sounds like a whole damn coffee table. Put some legs on it. Holy uh, moly. Yeah. When I say visual history, I mean, it's going through the history of Dungeons and Dragons by looking at all the artwork mm. of the different mm. things going oh. along. John, you definitely forget this because you watch this in like the early days. They show like the grid map dungeons. Sure. Of course. You know, and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. And they show like the original artwork and the little comic strips they used to have inside the, some of them. And, and it advances all the way through to the most recent versions. And they have even these little sections interspersed where they'll sit there and take like a single monster like Orc. And they'll show you the versions of Orc from the original Dungeons and Dragons to now. Like the evolution the over time evolution as they of portrayed the him. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You can just open to a random page and you'll see a picture and you'll say, oh my God, that was in the original player's manual versus bubble. You know, and you'll know where it is because it'll just trigger memories. That was a you. question that I was wondering. Does it have like the, a lot of the art that you would have seen in the Dungeons and Masters guide, that oh, first yeah. edition and the monster manual? All of them. All of that stuff. Oh, yeah. I have mine in the attic, but I haven't brought it down in a while. But I remember that artwork, and it was it was line drawings, and it wasn't yeah, even yeah. color in the original ones, was it? it? That's what they have. Oh, and some, you look at some of the artwork back, which I remember as a kid thinking it was some of the coolest artwork ever. But, you know, honestly, compared to today's artwork, it's not even close. Mm-hmm. But it still triggers that nostalgia. Like, oh, I, like I, she showed me a picture, and I'm like, that was from the Dungeon Master's Guide. And I turned to it and I read the caption, Dungeon Master's Guide, page one. I I knew it. I knew it. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. And then the forward on it had a part that I was, you know, I don't often read forwards, but I read this one. And the one thing the guy says that, which actually struck something with me, he's like, if you grew up in the 80s and you look at the way it's portrayed today, he says that it's not really the way it was. Is if you were into Dungeons and Dragons and stuff back in the 80s, you were a geek. You were mm-hmm. you were ostracized. You weren't cool. You just had the other group of people who also right, loved exactly. Dungeons and Dragons. And 
Yeah. He says, but, you know, the way it's kind of portrayed today, almost like if you were the 80s, you were the cool kids back in the 80s, you know, like Stranger Things and those kind of stuff. And it's like, no, that's not really the way it works. You know, no. Nope. <laughs> of course, now today, of course, it is very cool. The really good thing is that it's actually on sale on Amazon for oh. 27 bucks. Really? Yeah. A it's normally 400 goes for page 50. Dungeons and Dragons history normally for goes 27 for bucks. Nice. Okay. So if you, it's something you're looking for to kind of take you back and kind of look at the evolution of the game. And they, they talk about all the different versions and the, it, the modules and I mean, everything going forward. Right. So, well, I trust you will throw a link to that Amazon sale in the oh, show absolutely. notes. This, okay. Awesome. Cool. Thank absolutely, you. Absolutely. Absolutely. So Great. that's what I have, which I'm still jazzed about. George, <laughs> what do you got? The thing that I have, it's another one of these Christmas gifts that I was given when I talked about how my family went nuts on my Amazon wish list and bought every right. damn thing on it. So you I've said got you're a, well stocked for tech for I a while now, right? a few right? little got- things here and there to talk about. <laughs> this one ended up being a gift for me that is now a part of my son's life. It's no longer mine, <laughs> apparently. Okay. <laughs> Did he actually give it to you? or No, no, no. Um, so my wife was one, the person who bought it for me, and it's the Acaso DL12. This is a mirror dash cam. Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. So let me go through the whole thing because I got the dash cam and unboxed it. I found it on a YouTube channel, Dial Too Fast. This guy does a lot of tech stuff for cars, and he's really good at delivering his reviews. They're like usually like... 10 to maybe 15 minute reviews, but he goes through everything very methodically and it's easy to follow and understand. He does some of the best ones out there for that kind of stuff. And I found this one on his channel. I put it on my wish list because I wanted it for me to have in that Dodge 2019 Charger. Mm -hmm. However, that Dodge 2019 (laughs) Charger is no longer my vehicle. It is now my son's vehicle. Oh, yep. You had to follow through on a promise you made right? his driver's license, didn't you? Yes. Gave him his car. So on top of that, we installed the mirror in that car. I drove over to Jacksonville to let John help me because John is installed. He's experienced with this. A whole bunch of stuff. (laughs) And I wasn't sure what panel to pull on. When's it going to break? All that kind of stuff. John knows that stuff. He knows how to use the little wedge tools and everything. So I drove over to Jacksonville. He helped me install it. It took us what, John, maybe 30 minutes or so. Mm, Yeah. Yeah. Not bad. Something like that. 30 minutes to an hour at the most. And what it does is once you get all the wiring ran, you take the mirror dash cam itself and with these little rubber stretchy kind of plastic things, you put it in front of your regular mirror and then those hold it in place. It totally covers it. It becomes your new rear view mirror and it has two different modes. Either A, you can turn it off and just use it like a regular rear view mirror. Okay. Or B, when you turn it on, then the rear camera is what becomes your rear view mirror. Now, at the same time, it has a forward facing camera and when you swipe from right to left across the mirror, you get to see whatever view you want, either the front, Mm -hmm. the back, or a dual mode where you can see both of them. And it's the full screen of the mirror, which I know is some that John found interesting. That surprised me because when I'd seen those before, it was just, it was a mirror that had a little screen embedded in the corner. Mm-hmm. But I was right. stunned when this turned on and it was basically like an eight inch wide screen. It's 12 inches actually. Thing. That's what the inches. DL12 okay. is about. Yeah. Oh, that's the 12. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's huge. Yeah. yeah, it is. It's very long. I was worried that with where the clips are at on it, that my regular reverse mirror wouldn't be wide enough to hold on to the I know. clips. Yeah, yeah. But it's it enormous. did, and it's, it's, it's solid. Now, my son has been driving with this thing for a few weeks now, and there's some pluses or minuses. Hmm, okay. Number one, the recordings are incredible. They're... Two and a half K on the front cam and Jeez. 1080p on the rear cam. That's plenty. They're great. They're awesome. There's also a, a built-in microphone to record audio inside the car, which works perfectly. There are some other features like if somebody hits your car with a shopping cart in the parking lot, it pops on automatically and starts recording for a specific <laughs> period of time and saves that. Mm-hmm. If you're driving down the road and you get in an accident, it saves that from the impact. There's different sensitivity levels that you can set. So it says like, oh, there's that much impact on the car this must be an accident and it keeps that recording for however right. long you had it set for three minutes one minute five minutes whatever so how does it detect all that uh it's all built into different sensors that are built into the device like different oh, uh, okay. like a little accelerometer okay. in your phone it knows accelerometers your yeah. in there oh, yeah. yeah there's okay. uh there's there a gps go. hookup so that it also records your speed and all that kind of stuff distance and travel and whatnot uh it has built-in time recording and everything so that you can see the time stamp on your recordings nice it's good however the one con 
con that my son has talked about to me recently is that at night when driving with this one, the rear view camera tends to get washed out if the person behind you has super bright lights. Uh, hmm. There's no setting for that. Is it, can you put a coating or something over it maybe? There's no coating. You can adjust the brightness and dimness of the display yeah. itself by swiping up or down on the right hand side. But it's not a contrast setting. It's just bright and dim. Mm -hmm. So the washout is something that, unfortunately, I think is just built into the... It's not the mirror's fault. It may be the display's fault or the camera. I'm not sure which. And it doesn't wash it out like you can't see anything behind you. It just right. means that for that vehicle, you can't see any detail. You can't see its front license plate if it has one. You can't see who's in the car behind you. But the camera's getting it, right? Or no? The camera's getting it, yes. And okay. it's okay. not so it's nearly as washed clear. out on the recording. It's just gotcha. when you're driving. Driving. Got it. So got it's it. a little bit of a trade off because I saw this when we installed it and I was surprised because it has a bit of a, a wide angle lens. Mm -hmm. You see so much around behind you, like what normally would be a blind spot. So it's a little yeah. bit of a trade off. Maybe it's not as sharp, but you're seeing more stuff, right? And that was one of the trade offs that I liked. There is no blind spot in that car anymore. Literally, as a car, the rear bumper of a car leaves the camera angle on the mirror you're looking and that car is on your left door panel now. Nice. Yeah. That's great for a young you driver. Have to That's turn your head it's, right. it's really good. Now, I don't know about the price. If this is going to be something that is going to turn people off to these things, John, you know more about the prices of these kinds of devices than I do, but it's one Oh nine 99 on Amazon right now, but there is a clickable coupon that right now saves you $15. When I bought it, it saved you $20. That's very reasonable. Puts it at 95 roughly. Yeah. I think the first dash cam I got was 99. And then when I got a better one, you'll remember, I we talked about all these on the show. I think I paid 120 or whatever. That's mm -hmm. very reasonable for a quality dual camera. Okay. I think so. All right. Yeah. And it has even extra little features that we haven't mentioned. You can hook a wire up to your uh, rear light, you know, that comes on when you put it in reverse. Right. And it automatically shifts the camera's viewing angle to a lower angle so that you can use it as a backup cam as well. So mm. I'm going gotcha. to get something like this, maybe not this particular exact model for my older vehicle, my 2007 Kia, because there is no camera system in that one. So if you have an older vehicle that has no camera system, this mm -hmm. is a great way to easily add that to that vehicle and not at a horrible price. Unless no. I think if you had to go have it installed somewhere, they're probably going to charge you like 150 bucks or something. Right. So that might put it out of your range. But other than that, it's a great But device. you've seen the installation process now, and now you now that you've seen it, it's not that tough, really, is it? It's not. Uh, the only thing that I wish we'd have done, I wish we'd have filmed the installation process because nobody out there has a damn really <laughs> oh. good installation oh. process for oh, yeah. sedan cars. Like the one he installed it in was an SUV. And of course, every vehicle is going to be different. So, right. right. Yep. But a solid device. I like it a lot. Well, that's cool. Welcome to the world of dash cams. I know, it's right? fun. I enjoy them. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> so much so that you want another. <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of do at this point. But I don't <laughs> cool. think that this device is on the same spectrum as the tech toy that you have, John. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, geez. I mentioned on the last show that I was looking forward to getting a new phone. We, I hadn't upgraded in a, in a few years, and I saw that Samsung at their unpacked event introduced their Galaxy S21 line, and I ordered the big one, the monster, the uh, Galaxy S21 Ultra. Mm. Uh, and I actually got it a couple days ahead of when I thought I would, which was fantastic. So I've had it maybe two or three weeks now. There's no question that the S21 Ultra is the flagship Android phone right now. So often I think there's hyperbole around these phones and there's a tendency to get a new piece of hotness like this and go, there's nothing I don't <laughs> love about this. Everything is better about this. That's not the case with the S21. I will say overall, yeah, it's a much better phone. It's much faster. They've improved the fingerprint sensor from the old line. It's under glass now, of course. When they first went under glass with them, it was kind of hit or miss. And can you find it? They made that sensor larger and it's quicker to respond. And I think that's great. The 120 hertz refresh rate, I've never seen a, a handheld device that scrolls so buttery smooth as this thing. It's just that high frame rate is amazing. The only downsides really are kind of in the compromise compromises they made to keep this flagship line priced down, I think. Last year, their, their S20 line, like the top of the line was like eleven or like $1,300, I think, for that top of the line I Ultra. I think I paid eleven ninety nine for mine. That was bananas. And that was yeah. the big one, right? So the things they've changed here, they brought the price down a bit. The number one thing they took out that I'm not thrilled about is they removed expandable storage mm -hmm. in this now. So you can no longer put a Ooh. micro SD card in there. Now, other phones don't have that. iPhones don't 
don't have that. We're used to that. But I was used to having it in mind. And since this new camera array can record 4K video, I need storage space. So I wish they still had that. That's kind of a downside. I love that they added support for the S Pen, the Galaxy little, uh, the stylus, right? That has uh-huh. some features. Mm-hmm. But they don't include it with the phone. Okay. How much is it? Well, it's like 20 bucks or 30 okay, bucks, so I it's think. awful. But unlike the Galaxy Note that used the stylus, this doesn't have like a place to There's click no that storage pin into the phone. Oh, no, yeah. nowhere to put it. Oh. So I first tried to get a case that included it, and that made what is a behemoth of a phone already even bigger mm, to have right. a case that would accommodate it. So I really can't do that. So, I mean, I would give this phone a solid nine in just in terms of its phone, like a nine out of 10 if I was rating it. But all those little things kind of bring it down to like an eight and a half. You know, there's little nitpicky things that if you have a premium phone, phone that's top of the line, you're holding back little things for me that would make it a perfect 10. You know, like you could start at nine and get plus pluses, but they kind of started at a nine and gave minus minuses. I think one of the more interesting things about this whole Samsung story that's happened over these last couple of devices is if you remember, Mo should remember this because he was a big iPhone guy forever. I think you still have an iPhone, don't you? Or did you? you still yeah, do? I still do. Still have, still have. You remember when the yep. iPhone first took out the headphone jack and first took yeah. out internal yeah. storage. I was Samsung. About to ask about that exact set very same thing. Samsung did these huge ad campaigns about look at what iPhone's taken away from you. We still have it. <laughs> now that they've yep. done this, all those ads have disappeared from every piece of social media that they have. <laughs> yeah. Which I find right. very ironic and very, well, not ironic, yep. but just very funny and corporate obviously it's like mm-hmm. yeah. we never did that we don't know what you're talking about this is awesome right <laughs> yeah like not having the expandable memory mm-hmm. iPhones have never had that that's always been right. a selling point for the Samsung sure Yo, yep. you don't have you're out of storage you can buy this SD card you know I was okay with the headphone part because they included in my S20 they included a set of headphones that used the USB-C jack to turn that into a headphone jack and okay. I was fine with that because honestly I'm not charging and using my headphones at the same time sure. in any case. Mm-hmm. So yep. I like that part um, because I like USB-C so much. But the no expandable storage and that's the 4K yeah. video, that's just stupid. Who the hell made that kind of a decision? <laughs> yeah, it's a mismatch. If I'd it really couldn't read have added the specs, more than $20 to that phone. I know. It's just a tray, you know, and you have a reader in it. Yeah, it's 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 disappointing, but like anything, when a change like this happens, there's going to be outcry. I think they were trying to keep that price down. We talked about how expensive the S20 line was. I think they were trying to bring the price down, and so they made a lot of compromises so they could keep it. So now their flagship is eleven ninety nine. That's two hundred bucks less than last year. So that's nice. But honestly, if if I had really thought about it, I probably would have bought the the larger capacity phone and paid extra. So I kind of want it. They just it, it's really the economics of how do they get the most people to buy that phone. Not upset that I bought it. It's a great phone. I will admit that even for me now, this phone is getting a little big. It Maybe it's too big. <laughs> it's a monster. It barely fits in the little clip I have in my car for Android Auto. It just, just does fit. <laughs> if it was a little taller, like two more millimeters, I would have to get a new, new stand. It wouldn't fit. So the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra, that's a lot of words for just say it's my phone. It's, it's now my daily driver. Uh, it's a great phone. I kept my other one because my previous phone, there's nothing wrong with it. Now I have two two great camera phones that I can use and have at my disposal for shooting stuff for YouTube, which is nice. So keep an eye on the S21. I think maybe they're not going to do a note anymore this year. There's some debate about that in the, in the kind of the phonosphere, people that talk about it. So this might be the flagship for a whole year now. They may not do a better one. Huh. Be sure you check on the specs before you buy because it has, <laughs> it has a few compromises from last year. It's not just automatically better than before. All right, when we get back, we're going to dig into some games right after this. In some ways, I'm old-fashioned and sentimental. I save love letters, and I press flowers in books. But I do like the modern way to have prettier hair. That's why I like Nice and Easy. It's got built-in conditioners, and the color looks so honest. It lets me be me. I guess that's why Nice and Easy is the world's best-selling hair color. Hello, and welcome to Novel Conversations, a podcast about the world's greatest stories. I'm your host, Frank Lavallo, and for each episode of Novel Conversations, I talk to two readers about one book, and together, we summarize the story for you. We introduce you to the characters, we tell you what happens to them, and we read from the book along the way. So if you love hearing a good story, you're in the right place. Our ninth season is coming this fall. 
Tune in to hear from some of the all-time great authors, Charles Dickens, Jules Verne, F. Scott Fitzgerald, and more. Subscribe to Novel Conversations wherever you listen to podcasts. Time to start that time-old tradition of the Mm -hmm. Gen X grown-up game segment, ladies and gentlemen. Love it. I know this is one of the favorite things for all those Gen X grown-up nerds (laughs) out there because we grew up (laughs) in the video game revolution, arcades first, consoles later. We play video games nonstop in this channel, so it's time to find out what we've been playing recently. Mo, I want to start with you. What are you playing right now? Sure. I'm playing a brand new game that just came out. It's called Werewolf the Apocalypse Earth blood uh, it's that werewolf game i was looking forward to i can't wait tell me more <laughs> okay so based actually on a role-playing game put up by white wolf it has like vampire the masquerade which was a game that's like delayed like two years that's coming out for that um werewolf was another part and mage was another part so it's in that same world as those games all right and in this one like in the actual role-playing game it's like the werewolves are kind of like trying to save earth and of course there's the faceless evil corporation that's trying to destroy everything and it's the usual kind of man versus mm-hmm. nature sort okay. of deal i've only actually played Played like the first couple segments, and it's so far I like it, but I don't love it yet. Oh, mm, okay. okay. Well, l- let's start with the mechanics. So l- but before you tell me what you like and love, unless it's this, tell me more about how you get to be a werewolf. Am I a werewolf the whole time, or <laughs> you're, what's you're, the you deal start with off that? as a werewolf? You are oh, a do werewolf. I? Okay. Yep. Awesome. And your werewolf tribe or your clan, or whatever, is protecting like a sacred area of nature. And right. of course, it starts off with the evil corporations trying to destroy it. And so basically, when you play normally, you have two modes. You can either be a human, that, so you can interact with electronics and all that stuff. Okay. And you can turn into the wolf form, which is stealthier, which is just a pure wolf. Oh, just a regular wolf. Yeah, just a regular wolf. But then when the fighting starts, that's where the fun comes in because then you <laughs> turn into the werewolf character. Like, the oh, big it's time for teeth game. and claws. Yeah. You got, you got the claws. <laughs> You got the combat, you know, you you get to actually like grab people and then you have these awesome finishing moves. <laughs> oh, them, wow. Uh, which yep. is a lot of fun. That sounds cool. And this is how it works that you build like what they call like rage points and you can use that to heal yourself during combat or to use special moves. And, you know, the typical stuff that you see. That sounds game. cool. All right. But you said you like it, but not I like love it. it. So yeah, what's up? Uh, the story isn't grabbing me yet. And because it's based on a role playing game, White Wolf, I was hoping the story would be a little more immersive for me. Mm. And it's early yet. So I think maybe it's just because I'm playing like the first couple missions. So it's a lot of game mechanics, learning and that kind of stuff. So they're pretty flat, you know, like, you know, here's how you duck. Here's how you do this, which you you have to have right in a good game. The story itself, though, is I mean, so right now I'm getting into the parts where the story is getting a little bit more interesting. What I love about it, one is the combat as a werewolf is just fun. It's just that sounds awesome. You have enough special moves, but not too many where you're sitting there trying to figure out what to do. And you basically have two different moves modes of attack like a fast attack versus strong and you can switch between those two you have do have special moves and leap attacks and all that stuff and of course it has a good character building system where you can add attributes and add special abilities and all that stuff as time goes on so typical modern it's a very typical role, role very, playing very game typical. kind of stuff okay yeah it's just set in this world where you're a werewolf and there's a thing called the worm which is like the like basically the force that's working against nature and they work through corporations and people and stuff to, to work against that you know you get to fight all this high tech stuff but you don't get to use any high tech stuff because that's not who you are that's not your way right that's you're, not your way nature. You know, okay. the high tech stuff you have is a, a crossbow that's it a little handheld crossbow but you have a lot of stealth elements where you have to avoid cameras and people but of course you do have the silent takedowns which makes things a lot more fun yeah it almost sounds like you're playing a little mortal combat in around there you have you know light attack strong attack finishing moves that yeah, kind of exactly. stuff sounds yeah, cool. very, yeah, yeah. Very, it feels very much like that so this is brand new so you bought it brand new like full I price, actually pre-ordered it oh you I did okay. pre-ordered it because wow. I uh so it's a little cheaper on the pre-order so I paid 30 bucks for it pre-order i think it's going a little bit more now oh that's not awful and i'm sure the price will drop i'm sure it will yeah. and the reason why i bought it was because i love the role play game that it's based on that it's based on right okay and so i just bought it just on the strength of that i said if they capture any of that then i'm i'm bought in all right and they said i'm hoping the story gets better so i'll see where it goes all right fair enough werewolf the apocalypse earth blood earth blood got it so that's what i'm playing so how about you john what are you up to i'm playing a game that everyone has heard of so i don't have to describe it much but no. there's a new twist on it 
Oh, oh, twist. So what a twist. In uh, What a twist. In, in my Shyamalan wrote this game segment for us. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think almost everyone has played at some point GoldenEye oh, on the N64, yeah. mm. Nintendo 64, yeah. right? Yeah. What a great game. Multiplayer was amazing. It was all based on the film of the same name. The star Pierce Brosnan is James Bond. Yeah. Great game. And you can play it today through emulation. You can get the N64 ROM image for that. And you can play it. But it's pretty challenging to play, actually, because the controls on N64, they had that weird the controller was like three prongs and it had one analog stick and GoldenEye was very early in even any first person shooters it was kind of like the first real console attempt at a first person game like that so the controls don't map very well to a modern controller because the game doesn't think of controls that way however in the early 2000s, Microsoft was working on an upgraded version, a remastered version of GoldenEye for the Xbox Live Arcade. And it was almost done, but it entered licensing nightmares. So think about it, huh. this GoldenEye game. There was Microsoft, of course, who owned the Xbox. There was the people that own James Bond, so the Broccoli Foundation, right? And then uh, you have Nintendo that wrote the N64. And then you have oh, Rare that wrote it for the Nintendo. So it never was never released. It never came out. But just... Just last week, the actual full game that was almost finished leaked to play on an Ooh. Xbox 360 emulator, and it's a remaster. So you can play in the old graphics, or there's some refreshed, reskinned graphics. Okay. I've been playing this thing. A at the time we record this, I'm doing a live stream tonight where we're going to be playing this. Uh, you can go back and watch the replay when you're listening to this later. Something about this GoldenEye, it was so early. Modern shooters have progressed and there's all collecting uh -huh. things and there's the things you have to find and talk to this guy and stuff. GoldenEye was that pure run and gun. You had that little silenced sniper rifle and you had the silenced pistol and you shoot guys and they collapse on the ground and then dissolve because they didn't have the memory to keep them. And I've been playing this thing since I got this new image. GoldenEye for the N64 is is one of those games that if you, even if you didn't play in 64, you had somebody that made you come and oh. play a LAN party to come yeah. play multiplayer. And so this thing is available. I'll give you most some links to put in the show notes where you can go and find this. It's actually available okay. on archive.org. It's publicly available to go and grab. You can grab a 360 emulator and you can play GoldenEye. And the last cool little bit that I want to say about what they did with this port that was, I guess, never supposed to see the light of day, which is cool that we have it, <laughs> is that since it's a remaster, and it has both the old N64 graphics and the reskin in it. At any point in the game, while you're playing, if you tap the right bumper on your controller, it switches between those two graphics modes. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see how it used to look and you can see the refresh. Now, granted, the refresh is now 10 years old, but it's still much, much better than the N64 graphics. So if you have any nostalgia for GoldenEye, as I said, look down those show notes. You can go and grab it and play it yourself. Or if you just want to see what it looks like, head over to our YouTube channel. We'll have a link in the show notes as well to that live stream will be in the past for you now that we're doing this evening to check out. So yeah, some golden eyes, some classic N64 stuff come back in a new form. That's interesting. It is. All right, <laughs> George, man, we are so close to the end of this run you have looking at old Humble Bundle games that you had but never played. Where are we at today? We are on the letter Y. Oh, so, wow. Yeah, mm -hmm. just a little Why? bit more to go. Because we like you. All right, yeah. yeah Mo, Let's you throw all the Y jokes out there now. Get them out of the way. <laughs> right. Um, Why? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> it's difficult when you're getting to these last few letters in the alphabet to find games yep. that start with those letters. For anything. But I was able to find one. I did purchase this in a humble bundle. However, I mm -hmm. have owned this game for 25-ish huh? years at this point what? in another form. <laughs> okay. We are all big fans of the Jackbox slew of games oh, sure. here on Jackbox. Oh, yeah, we play them in our Discord channel all the time. However, they started off with a series of games called You Don't Know Jack. They were trivia games that you played against yeah. two other of your friends in front of the same console. You had different letters on the keyboard that you pressed for buzzers and all kinds of fun things happened in the trivia contest and you could do different screws to each other. It was a lot of fun. They had several of those iterations of those games. You don't know Jack Volume 1, Volume 2, Volume 3. Well, then they got to Volume 4, The Ride. And that is the game that was in a humble bundle oh, okay. called the Humble Jackbox <laughs> Party Bundle. You can tell why oh, I probably right. bought it because yeah, I was probably, getting yeah, some yeah. of the Jackbox <laughs> Party games. This one is, it's a very fun version of You Don't Know Jack. They built on what made the original game so much fun. They added a bunch of new elements into it 
and stuff. They called it the ride. So there's like a bunch of car driving on the highway motif kind of stuff with it. I bought the bundle in August of 2018. So Mm -hmm. two and a half years ago at this point. I bought it for the Jackbox party packs so that I could host and play games with us on our discord channel. Sure. But now that this was in there, I was like, that's a perfect Y letter game to throw on the list <laughs> because I've already played it a whole bunch of times. And a great oh, one too. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. It's the one that's, it's like carnival ride or something kind of theme, right? He's uh, yeah, kind of a, a sideshow bit. burger it's, a little bit. Yeah. A little bit. So it's uh, the description on steam right now says play the game that many consider to be, you don't know, Jack's most fun offering the ride. Already played it. Trust us. You've forgotten everything by now. (laughs) (laughs) True. For the fourth volume of the mega award-winning CD-ROM trivia game show, the You Don't Know Jack crew decided to throw out the You Don't Know Jack rulebook and start fresh. Mm. Game came out November 30th, 1998. Really? Yes. Wow. Yes. Man. Yep. That's been 22, 23 years, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's wow. it's been out forever. Now here's something interesting. This game right now is going for the super high price of two ninety nine on Steam. <laughs> it is kind of old. So <laughs> you almost can buy it for what it cost me in my humble <laughs> Steam pack thing. If you like trivia games, if you want to have a fun, friendly get together. It limits the amount of people to only three. So you're okay with the COVID restrictions of having right. yeah. too few people right. over at your house kind of a thing. <laughs> I know I've played all the You Don't Know Jack trivia games. John, I know you have too, Mo. I know you played yep, a lot yeah. of them. They are a blast. They're so much fun. Yeah, we used to have basically You Don't Know Jack get-togethers where that was the thing that you would do. You would come over and mm-hmm. the ride was definitely in the rotation. It was, well, all of those. They had one for sports and one for movies and TV, I think. Yep. And and the ride, I remember just being, it, they did change the rules up quite a bit and add some new elements in there. So I guess let's get to the, the elephant in the room. You said that you could buy it right now for three bucks, but, yeah. which is almost as cheap as you bought it almost. for. So <laughs> how cheap did you get away with for this game? So I bought that pack for $12 All right. and there were 22 items in that pack. So each item individually <laughs> cost me 55 cents. So I still yeah. got, only paid 25% Killing. of what it costs on Steam right now or something along those lines. I mean, it was that's it's a awesome. crazy price to have. And that's what Humble Bundle does. You get, especially when they have these themed packs that you can get something that you like like jackbox games i mean yeah you know you know that everything in that bundle is going to be something you're probably going to like and to pay 12 bucks for it and get 22 items that's awesome and it's going to be a hell of a deal that's yeah, right it, absolutely. it's it's such, it makes so much financial sense that like well 12 bucks i don't even know if i like these games look you've only got to like one of them mm-hmm. to really a major money yeah. if you might if you like two of them you're crushing it yeah. so all right so bring us up to speed now we're up to 25 out of 26 we next are. episode is going to be the the ultimate Ultimate, the end, but where are we so far? How much you spent and saved? Well, so let me give you my rating on You Don't Know Jack Volume oh, 4 oh, oh, the Ride right. first. Yeah, yeah. So right. I tried to give it a rating based on today's Jackbox Party offerings versus that when it came out. I didn't want to skew one way too much or the other because nostalgia me says this is an awesome yeah. game. It's almost a five. Right. It was perfect for what it was. However, 2021 me says, well, maybe it didn't necessarily hold up as well as some of the other Jackbox party games do now. I was went back and forth. So I ended up giving it three and three quarters tokens out of five. I think that's a fair oh, very rating. respectable. Oh, yeah. And for oh, yeah. $2.99, it's almost an instant buy. Even if you just want to play it yourself just to be entertained by the You Don't Know Jack crew, Cookie Masterson mm-hmm. and the whole bunch, it's, yeah, it's kind of worth three bucks just for that. As far as the rest of the stats go, what we're at right now <laughs> is had I purchased all of these games individually on Steam prices at the time when we reviewed them, Mm -hmm. I would have spent a total of $390.75 at this point. Wow. (laughs) Now, for all the Humble Bundles, and remember there are several of these bundles in here that I've used twice or three times even, but let's say that I had to buy a different Humble Bundle every time for one on the list, I have spent $329.39. It doesn't sound like that much of a savings until you get to (laughs) how much I paid for the individual games as a total. So for the individual games, when you do all the math and the division and the spreadsheet work, and everything i have spent a total of ten dollars and 72 cents <laughs> for wow. 25 games Man. so far just barely broke 10 bucks with this entire series yeah wow so when you take <laughs> that away from the what 390 dollars at this point mm-hmm. i've saved 380 that's bucks. amazing whoo 
All right. Th- we're almost to the, speaking of the ride, we're almost to the end of this amazing we ride. Are. One yeah, more we are. We need you then. Next yeah. time. So uh, often when we do these, you have from your amazing package of bundles, something to give away. Do you have something this time? We do. And I think this one is a real winner for, especially for those of you who are listening that have joined our discord server and like to play a lot of these Jackbox party pack games with us. We mm-hmm. actually have a Jackbox party pack number four key oh, to nice. give away. That's got a lot of good games in it. Um, all the Jackbox Party Pack games have great, you know, they're all great titles in there. It's got the Survive the Internet game that mm-hmm. we love is in there. Yep. Fibbage 3 is in that pack. Monster Seeking Monster. That's a that's a nice bundle. That's cool. It is. It's a really solid bundle. And I think they're up to what, like six or seven now? Yeah, I think it's seven. Just yeah. came out. Yeah. So right? this is right in the middle. So you're not too far behind like the very first ones. You don't have the brand new one, but it's free and you get it from mm-hmm. Gen X Grown Up. And all you have to do is send us an email to podcast at genxgrownup.com with the subject of you don't know Jack. All right. Perfect. You don't know Jack. Simple. Can't get easier than that. Awesome. All right. If you're the first to hit our inbox, you will get that key. George, this has been so much fun. I'm I'm a little sad it's almost over. I'm not. But (laughs) you've had enough. (laughs) You're done managing the spreadsheet. I mean, because we release these every two weeks and there's 52 weeks in a year, this has been an entire year of my life of playing these games. Teared it up. And so we've got one more oh. to go, the letter Z. So I don't know. I haven't All tried right. to play that game yet. So I don't know if it's going to be good right. or not. But All right. Very cool. It'll be something. Yeah. That's neat. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll be back right after this. Stick around. Fellow Americans, stop dragging your feet. Wear kitties when you're going to go out on a date. Look great. But do you know your feet need a little love? Kitty knows. What an agonizing enterprise and hard kind of day you spend working overtime. You. Be a bit small. You. When you say you need shoes for it all, I say comfort and style. If you're young at heart or young enough to remember, come to Kitty and explore. I'm Ken Harbaugh, host of Warriors in Their Own Words, a podcast that presents the unvarnished, unsanitized truth of what we have asked of those who defend this nation. As a country, we need these stories more than ever. Stories from Americans who have borne the battle, including 30-year-old remastered interviews with veterans from World War I recounting their time in the trenches of Europe, and with veterans from World War II, Korea, Vietnam, and from our most recent conflicts in Iraq, Afghanistan, and other battlefields Americans may never have heard of. Hear their stories by listening to Warriors in Their Own Words wherever you find podcasts. Before we wind up the show, we always like to take a few seconds here toward the end to talk about what we're looking forward to between now and the next time we get together. And let's start with you, George. Appropriately enough, what are you looking forward to? I am absolutely looking forward to finishing off that damn humble bundle list. (laughs) (laughs) One whole year of my life, and the next time we record this podcast will be the last video game, letter Z, (sighs) will be done. It's kind of bittersweet, though, isn't it? But you could easily start over. You know, you can start over. We can do the (laughs) whole humble bundle. The list. I'll give you a spreadsheet template to use. <laughs> you got plenty of games. Just saying. Okay. I got to. all kinds of games, but I'm I'm gonna take a break at this point. I mean, goodness. Yeah, right. I'm gonna play what I want to play, play, not what you. starts with F. Right. Right. I'll just play that. Right. Yeah. Especially got as you it. start getting into those last letters. You know, the X's and the W's and the. That's tough. There's some tough ones out there. I mean, it's it's not always perfume and roses. It's there's some stickers in those. <laughs> I for stores. one will be sad to see it go, even if you're not. All right. <laughs> I am looking forward to a new film that's coming out both in select theaters and also in digital. And it looks great from the trailer. It drops on February 12th. Uh, It's called Breaking News in Yuba County. Okay. Sounds really uninteresting so far. Go ahead. Well, you won't when you... So it's got Mila Kunis, Aquafina, Wanda Sykes, Juliette Lewis. Oh, okay. Uh, The blurb says a woman buries the body of her husband after he dies of a heart attack when caught cheating on her and struggles to keep it a secret. Hmm. Oh, she's afraid that they're going to blame her even though it wasn't her fault kind of thing? That's right. It's a it's a kind of a crime drama. It's a quirky character drama. It reminds me a lot of like the um, uh, what are the like the Fargo type like heist kind of films where everybody is up to something. And if you see the trailer, you'll see what I'm talking about. It, it feels very much in that same vein. 
of uh, what's the like a Raising Arizona kind of a oh, you know, okay. everybody's up to something kind of right. film. So yeah, it's, it's coming out just in a few days. Breaking news in Yuba County. It's one I'm definitely, I, I don't know much about it and I've intentionally not researched it, but just from the trailer, you will see what I'm talking about. So we'll we'll give you a link to that trailer in the show notes uh, and you can check it out. Cool. And maybe, maybe watch it as well. Mo, how about you? What are you looking forward to? Uh, it's another new show that's coming out on Netflix. It's called Tribes of Europa. Mm. It starts uh, February 19th as a premiere. I don't know a whole lot about it, but it sounds interesting. It's the future, like 2070 something. There's some sort of earthwide cataclysm thing. And it's basically these Europe has broken up into these small little tribes, essentially. And it's about them just sort of fighting and trying to figure out oh, who's in charge so, sort of deal. Oh, so the tribes of Europa is literally tribes in Europe. Got yeah, it. exactly. Okay. Exactly. Yeah, it's a pretty literal title. Ah, uh, not Europa the moon. No, okay. no, no. <laughs> it's Europe the Europa the oh, whatever. You know what I'm talking <laughs> yeah. about. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, I don't have to explain it. But um it said it's it just you know, Netflix has done a pretty good job with their series, I think, overall. Um, this one, like I said, it has a little bit of future apocalyptic world ending stuff, which I'm always a fan of. So I'm kind of curious to see what it's about. Mo loves the end of the world. It's one of his favorite things. It always has. Yeah, been. it's yeah. always kind of cool. It's interesting. <laughs> All right. Tribes of Europa, February 19th on Netflix. Cool. When did you start baking from scratch? It's not scratch, Mom. It's new Pillsbury Plus. A yellow cake this firm could only be from scratch. It's Pillsbury Plus. A cake this moist could only be from scratch. A cake this rich could only be from scratch. It's Pillsbury Plus. The plus is pudding. Mm. Pudding right in the mix to add that moistness. Mmm, rich flavor. New Pillsbury Plus, huh? Looks like scratch has met its match. If there was anything in this show you'd like to learn more about, the show notes which accompany each episode are full of links to click and explore. Catch up on past episodes and get pinged every time a new one's released by subscribing wherever you listen to podcasts. And you know, iTunes reviews help more than you know. So if you haven't yet, please rate and review us in the iTunes app. And if you have a friend who isn't yet listening, why not? Tell them about us. They'll thank you later. You're our fourth listener, and we'd love to read your emails right here on the show. So hit us up at podcast at genxgrownup.com. And finally, Gen X Grown Up is more than just this podcast. Our YouTube channel has hundreds of videos ready for you to enjoy. Plus, you can find our entire body of work on genxgrownup.com. That is going to put a bow on episode 91 of the Gen X Grown Up podcast. You know, before we leave, I love taking just a moment here toward the end of the show to give our heartfelt gratitude to the people that support us financially over on Patreon. Literally a few bucks a month to help keep the lights on, support what we do on the podcast over on YouTube and the website. And I'll thank you each and every one. Blasted or stash at Sean, Jason, Steen, David, Lee, Mike C, Mark, Ben, Dan, Travis, Butterspider, Greg, L, Dana, Adam, Stu, Baca, T2, Jonathan H, Miss So, Agile, Greg Z, Thomas, Davis, Marcus, Matt, Stu Monkey, Tony, Chet, Levi, Shelby, Slowbo, Chad, Arlem, and new. Since we last spoke, Uno Clay has joined us wow. Uno as Clay. a new cool. patron. I think that means he's Uno. He's the number one Clay. I'm going to assume uh, what that means. So maybe his name is Clay. He was differentiating himself from the famous wrestler Duo Clay. Duo no. Clay. No. Oh, he's oh, pre- he's the predecessor to Duo Clay. <laughs> Might be. All right. Thank you so much, Uno Clay, for joining us and supporting yeah, what we do. You. We love you for it. If you would like to follow suit to what Uno Clay did and support us as well, George, would you tell the fine fourth listeners how to get that done absolutely all you have to do is go over to genxgrownup.com slash patreon or patreon.com slash genxgrownup you create an account you sign up for one of the awesome levels of different levels of benefit and then you send us money and we love that that is awesome <laughs> that's the best part <laughs> however that is not the only way that you can become a Gen X Grown Up supporter mm-hmm. you can also head over to our youtube channel subscribe yep. turn on that bell for all the notifications and right next to that there's a little button now that says join you click that button Mm -hmm. it tells you that to join and become a youtube member supporter you only have to pay 2.99 a month a bargain at twice the price (laughs) at least (laughs) and we have several people who have already made that jump and those people are marcus blaston and stash and miss so mike d doc mike m t2 stabaka and new to that same group is mike c who is also one of our patrons these people who love to double dip and give us money in two different places Places, two different pockets. I love it. <laughs> we get perks on both sides of the fence. That's great. Thank you, Mike. That's awesome. I want to see that list get longer so Mo and George have so much trouble reading it like I have trouble keeping up with the you other one. assume that we suffer from your same problem, sir. <laughs> no, we shall see.
see what we <laughs> Thank you, George. Could not have said it better myself. We appreciate each and every one of you that support us. We will be back in two weeks with another regular episode, but next week is our backtrack. We pick a single nostalgic topic and dig in deep. Mo, tell the Force listeners what's coming up next week. Oh, yeah. I mean, when we were kids, nothing made us happier than getting a prize in cereal or any other food item, right? Mm-hmm. And so right. that's what we're going to be talking about next week is just all the totally useless and horrible and wonderful <laughs> toys that we got from cereal and candy and toys. It's just going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, you can throw your wacky wall walker against the wall and watch it fall in the dirt. All those cool things <laughs> that we used to get. Yeah, all those classics. <laughs> That's going to be a blast. And we have a special guest on that episode, so you don't want to miss to find out who that is. Until then, I am John. George, thank you so much for being here. Yes, sir. Mo, you know I appreciate you. Oh, man, always fun. And fourth listener, it's you we all appreciate most of all. And we will talk to you next time. Bye-bye. See you guys. Take care, everybody. Gen X Grown Up is a member of the Evergreen Podcast family. Learn more at evergreenpodcasts.com. Unacceptable for grown ups. Your dinner cannot just be french fries. Basically, life sucks as a grown up. Fastest intro segment in a year and a half. Yeah, efficient. Well, the first, I think the other backtrack went long, so I'll do this one fast. <laughs> Monster Hunter, it sucked. Mo, how about Expanse? <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Next. Great. Moving on. Resident Alien, we love it. Okay, take a choice. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. It's the episode where we all clearly had somewhere to be. <laughs> <laughs> Tell the fourth listeners what's coming up next week. So next, oh, sorry, let me do it again. <laughs> Five. That was, I had something like I was I was starting to speak and I say wait that's not what I want to say and in my <laughs> so you <brain> know <laughs> short circuited. Yeah, so you know. Um, okay, <clears throat> you want to pitch to you again? Yeah, please. Hit Pass Moto, sponsored by Moto America, is the show that keeps you up to speed on the latest in motorcycling and brings the biggest names in motorcycle racing right to you. From candid interviews with the top names in racing to providing insights into the trends and trendsetters driving the motorcycle industry, we have you covered. New episodes are available every Thursday at pitpassmoto.com and on your favorite podcast app. Ride on.